Okay, guys, welcome to Madeira. I've only been here for a few hours, but I'm absolutely blown away. All above the clouds, it reminds me a lot of La Palma in the Canary Islands. But is it going to be as dark as La Palma? I don't think so, but I'll find out soon enough. The sun is just setting, and I'm making my way up to the highest peak in Madeira called Pico Ruivo. I think it's like 1,800 meters. And uh, yeah, just gonna do lots of Milky Way photography, planets, constellations with the star glow, some moon photography. And uh, we'll see what kind of beautiful landscapes we can find. So I'm gonna carry on with this hike and uh, I'll see you guys at the top after this intro. So my biggest issue with this trip is that the moon doesn't set tonight until about 1 a.m. And then every night it sets about 45 to 50 minutes later. So I don't have many days where there's going to be nice dark skies. I've got to try and make the most of the dark skies as I can. And I haven't done much planning or prepping for this trip. So I thought the best way to get a good idea of the island would be to come to the highest peak on my first night. And now the, the summit has incredible 360 degree views and I'm above the clouds. It's absolute heaven. But there's not really that much in the way of compositions, photographically speaking, but I did see a few compositions on the way up. So I'm probably gonna head back down in a bit. I'm just gonna change out my sweaty clothes, have a little rest, maybe a coffee. And then I'm going to head back down. And one of the shots is good at 1 a.m., one of the shots is good at 3 a.m., and one of the shots is good at 5 a.m. So I'm going to be bouncing about and making the most of the dark skies tonight. This feels so damn good right now, and it's just going to be nice to, to get out under the stars, above the clouds, and just oh, take it all in and enjoy. So I've just come back down to this tree here, which I first saw in a Daniel Corden photograph a couple of years ago. And it was also in a Nigel Danson video. And I was just speaking to Nigel Danson a few hours ago and he recommended that I came up to this mountain, but I didn't realize this tree was here. And uh, as much as I don't like taking photographs that have already been taken before, this is too good of an opportunity to miss. This tree is incredible. And we're gonna have the Milky Way in the background. So I'm just waiting for the moon to set. It's just up there. Um, but tonight's pretty much the only chance for me to get this shot, so I'm just going to go for it, because tomorrow, when the moon is up a little bit later, the Milky Way just sort of moves out of the composition and it doesn't look great, so I'm just going to bag that as soon as the moon sets. And, uh, yeah, I've got about an hour until moon set. I'm going to take some test shots, find my composition, get set up and ready. And uh, I might start shooting just before the moon set, so we got a little bit of light on the tree and the mountains, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So I tried a few different compositions, and then once I was happy with the composition, it was time to work out how to get the best image quality possible. Okay, so I've picked my favorite composition and I've just been refining it. And I actually took the image when the moon was just above those mountains over there because it was casting a really nice soft light on the foreground and it looked really nice on the tree. But then when the moon sets below the horizon, I'm going to retake the image because the skies will be a bit darker and then I can see which one 
I prefer. But I'm trying to keep things simple. So you can see I'm in a very awkward position. So I'm not going to get the star tracker out. And because the tree is sort of covering a lot of the sky, even if I was to do a tracked image of the sky, it would be very difficult to blend with that tree. So I'm not going to use the star tracker. I'm just going to use a 14 millimeter, the Sony 14 millimeter f1.8. And I'm just going to focus stack the foreground and then probably take 12 to 16 images for the night sky. And I'm going to stack those in sequitur, which does a really good job of stacking images, even when there's a tree sort of covering the sky. So this was the image captured in the last moments of the setting moon, and this is the image captured just after the moon had set below the horizon. And I was surprised at how little difference there actually was between them. Obviously the Milky Way position is a bit different, it's probably better in the moonlit shot. And I suppose the other biggest difference is the lighting on the mountains in the distance. I quite like that little bit of moonlight on the mountains. But otherwise, not a huge difference. I was quite surprised. Which one is your preference? And I also tried a slightly different composition just before I left, getting a little bit closer to the tree so it filled the frame a bit more. I wasn't convinced with how dominant that rock was in the foreground and the Milky Way was very much crammed up against the edge of the frame. And then despite all the work on that composition, the favourite image I guess I came away from that scene was this single exposure focused on the tree so that the stars were nice and bokeh and I think it just celebrates the tree and its intricate shapes and patterns a bit better and just thought it was quite funny that it was just a simple single exposure. So my second composition is a nice view of the mountain hut slash restaurant that's very close to the peak. So I had to hike back up close to the peak. But the composition is facing northeast and there's a faint region of the Milky Way in that area and it runs through the constellation Cassiopeia. So I'm definitely going to use the star glow filter on this one because it, it just works so well on the constellation Cassiopeia. And there's a lot of nice little bright stars, colorful stars as well in this region of the night sky. And then the added bonus of Andromeda, the spiral galaxy is also gonna be in the frame. Now, unfortunately the cable, my intervalometer is playing up. It just, it's just not working properly. I'm not gonna go into details, but it means that there's not much point in me putting the star tracker on because I can't do an exposure longer than 30 seconds and I can't do an exposure of two or three minutes for my foreground. So I'm gonna to have to stack for noise reduction and I'm using the Sony 24 millimeter F1.4 G Master, my favorite lens. And it, it just frames nicely a panorama. So I'm gonna do about 10, maybe 12 images for the sky and stack those. And for each exposure, I'm gonna hold the star growth filter in front for about half the exposure. And then I'm going to do 10 to 12 exposures of the foreground without the star glow filter so that the foreground stays nice and sharp. And then I'll, I'll blend those two together as a panorama after I've stacked them both separately. So just making things difficult for me, but hopefully it will still be a lovely image. It's a beautiful cloud inversion and above the clouds and uh, there's a big town in that direction. So the cloud is smothering that town and uh, helping to reduce the light pollution, which is really, really nice of it. Me and clouds normally don't get on, but I love being above the clouds. how this image turned out and I love the star glow effect on those stars in that area of the night sky and sadly when I saw the composition at twilight the lights in the mountain hut were on they were switched off by the time I wanted to go and shoot it and I think having those lights on just would have added a little extra something to the image and the third image that I had in mind of these flowers just 
didn't quite look as good at night time as I thought it would when I saw the composition in the daytime. And I think at this point I was just exhausted and I couldn't wait to get back to the apartment and in bed. So for those of you asking, yes, I do sleep. Yes, I am human. Well, that was one of the best nights of astrophotography I think I've ever had. Definitely top 10, maybe even top five. Well, I'm going to start taking some photos, guys.